Good morning, this is Dario Nardi from the University of California here in Los Angeles. And I hope all of you are having a great time at the Frontiers in Interaction Conference in Milan. I'd like to thank Leandro for uh, inviting me. I'm sorry I can't be in attendance personally. I will actually be in London this morning as you see this. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about social bot, and I'm really excited to show you a little bit of what I've done here, especially with your emphasis on interaction, which is sort of what I've been going for from the beginning. As you can see, I have a little bit of a computer set up here. There's a robot. There's our little ripper arm here. It's not doing too much at the moment. And there's also a virtual character, which we'll have a chance to take a look at, too. Now, you can go to a website to view another video to see the robot in action. So even though the robot is, for many people, the part that excites them the most, I'm going to suggest you go to socialbot.com. Again, that's socialbot.com. And then you can watch the video. And if you have a Mac as well as a PC, that will work too. I'm going to talk first about what inspired me to create social interaction. One inspiration was, well, as many times happens in science, uh, it's a little science fiction show, a vignette, an episode which suggested the idea that there might be human-like robots, androids, that would have emotional intelligence but would lack intellectual intelligence. And of course this is really a reversal from the stereotypes we've had from the 50s, 1950s and onward. And so I thought, well gee, what kind of situations would those robots be in and what would that be like and sort of how can we take some baby steps to get there. So as you can see here, there's a few little, and these are on the website, there's a few little uh, color vignettes, images that show this idea of interaction in between people and, and robots. And of course, this is very, you know, I don't know if we'll get to this in 20 years from now, uh, maybe 40 years from now, whatnot. This is an example of an Android teacher and what kind of interaction that is required in teaching. Apparently, a lot of human teachers don't know, so if we can get those into robots, that will probably be really stupendous. Um, and uh, so that was a little bit of the artistic inspiration, the vision I had in my mind of what could be done. As for an actual social bot, I wanted to include two things really. The exchange of social information. So that might be my name, your name, uh, information about ourselves, where we want to go, what we'd like, uh, what our needs are, what plans we might have, who we relate to, who our family members are, all that information that we as human beings exchange every single day. And then the other factor I wanted was, in addition to that verbal sort of the data content part, was the nonverbal use the hands kind of part. Uh, so that there would be facial expressions and responsiveness and people could see something that they could it shows that it understands them, or at least has some kind of feedback to who they are and, and what they do. So the, this environment which I've created here is a virtual character, and as you can see here, he doesn't look particularly human. He looks a little bit like an android, and we'll talk about that and why I would select something that would be in the middle. And then there's a very simple console environment, which either one can speak through a microphone, or you can type in directly. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to type in, and then it's going to speak back verbally. You see, he does move a little bit as he's waiting for us to do something, but he's very patient. Okay, I'm like a human being, so right away we know that there are a few differences. So let's try uh, a good morning. It's slow. The time is 10.31 a.m. It'll get faster, though. Okay, and so that's very nice. It gives some basic stuff right there. Now, we could also ask, we wanted to have some kind of intelligence, and it doesn't need to be solving math theorems kind of intelligence, that's not what I did, but I do want to see, for example, is it day or night outside? It is likely morning. Okay, so he knows if it's 10.31 in the morning, then a.m., then it's probably in the morning. Now, let's say we've had a problem with the microphone or we're wandering off in some other direction conversation-wise. Can it initiate? Because human beings initiate conversations. So let's say here we get in some random input, you know, HG, whatever. My name is Truman. 
What is your name? So this is a couple of important things here. One is that in social exchange, the idea is we give something to the other person and give something back. So he doesn't just say, what's your name? He gives something of himself first. So there's some revealing aspect which helps make people feel comfortable that there's some kind of normal human experiences going on here. And what's your name? And of course, he doesn't demand that we enter in any particular way. So I can say, I am Dario, or it's Dario, or my name is Dario, or, uh, well, if I spoke Italian, then maybe we could program in something that it will know some Italian grammar too. But let's just say Dario. Hello, Dario. Nice to meet you, sir. Thank you for telling me your name. So again, we see a lot of important elements of social interaction here. One is that he's repeating the information that I've given to him. Human beings, I mean, we really don't know what a robot's going to know or not know. If we go to an ATM machine at a bank, we're sort of guessing because we've seen them for 20 years what they do. If we see a new program for the first time with a character, we don't know how stupid or smart it is. So it repeats the name. And it also says, nice to meet you, so it's doing something positive. It's starting off on a positive social foot. Maybe it won't like us later on, but at least it's going to assume it has some positive start. And notice it also says, sir, nice to meet you, sir. So it's letting us know that it understood that Dario is a male name. Now, it knows hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of names. I mean, somebody may have a unisex name, and it won't know, and then maybe it needs to ask for clarification. Now, normally, if somebody comes in and they say, hello, my name is Pat, and then it says, are you male or female, that might be sort of rude. So if it doesn't know, it will wait. But here it's letting us know what it's learned, and it says, thank you for telling me your name. So this idea, it's sort of in a one-down position, because this is a robot, and it's not a human being, but it's also being very nice, and it's placing itself socially just a little bit lower than the rest of us. And it's also letting us know that it's completed the gathering of the data. It feels like we've answered its question. And he's waved good morning. Good morning. Oh, and he said good morning too. Okay. Now, something which may have been too quick to see here, uh, right when the computer starts up, it's a little slow when it speaks. Of course, in a real system, we want it to be responsive. So as soon as you turn on the car engine or you open the refrigerator or whatnot, then it can respond. It doesn't have to boot up which is such an old-fashioned idea, isn't it? Uh, and then another thing that I have is he waves hello. So maybe we don't wave hello when we see each other in the morning, but it does give a sense of a sort of a universal responsiveness. And there's something positive as well, because notice his hand is open. So throughout history, we've known an open hand indicates that something is safe. And that's true across many different cultures. It also repeats the gesture twice. So if the person is not expecting it, then they'll catch it again when he does it again. So these are little things that I picked up when I noticed people interacted with the system, and then also anthropological concepts of how people interact with each other. Uh, let's see, one or two more things. Um, oh, humor. Humor is so important. So I've actually used this program to teach a, a class lesson before at the university. And uh, besides knowing the lecture and so on, I made sure he knew some jokes. Jokes are very important. And he knows a lot more jokes than I do then that's a good thing, and you can integrate them up. So maybe he knows a knock-knock joke or something like that. So uh, if you know any knock-knock jokes, knock-knock. Who's there? Okay, and so you can engage in a sort of multi-step process. Orange poo. And then orange, you glad you are not a, uh, well, let's see. We should probably say something like a refrigerator. You are very funny. Now, he didn't laugh here, but he did say you were very funny. So this is sort of, he could laugh if he wanted to, but there's a number of ways to respond. One is that maybe we might say some things in our joke that will be familiar to him and he'll laugh. But he's a robot, so he doesn't really understand humor too well. So he's just going to simply go with the best possibility that we we're trying to be funny. And then if we really weren't, then maybe we can interpret him as being sarcastic. So we project our uh, meaning making and, and emotion translating mental capacity into uh, what the machine does. And I think it's really half of where the intelligence is. It's not just remembering information. 